Cool. Alrighty, welcome you guys to Manufacturing Month. This is our last event with TK America. Um, and then just a few housekeeping things before we get started. Um, so we have our check-in form, so that's pretty helpful. So um, your counselors know where you're at, especially if you're attending this live. Um, and then we also have the evaluation form, which is what's gonna give you um, career credit. So we need to make sure that's filled out at the end. Um, and then we also have the scholarship. Um, since this is the last live event, the rest of the, the only other way to um, be able to um, access or to submit a scholarship application is to watch the videos on your own time, which is never as fun. Um, but for this scholarship, you can get $500 if you're a high school student. Um, we have five for high school students, five for high school teachers, and two for middle school teachers. Um, and in this forum, you know, you, there's a couple prompts that you can choose, you know, what did you like the best about manufacturing month? Which one is your favorite manufacturer? Um, how do you think you're going to fit in a manufacturing career in the future? Is that something that you think you might enjoy? Um, and um, what do you think you'll use the $500 for? Uh, because you don't have to put it towards higher education. You can use it for tools. You can use it for a sewing machine. Um, however, you can fit that into STEM work. So you have a lot of, lot of um, possibilities. Um, and that application is due November 5th. Um, and then lastly, we have a great questions document, which is um, great questions to ask the presenter. I know you get a lot of information during the presentation and sometimes you're like, what do I want to know? But I don't remember what I want to know. That's a great form to get you started. All right, um, let's see, how do I? Okay, uh, so again, be fully present. Try to refrain from um, being on your phone or checking social media. Um, that these presentations always have something really interesting going on. So um, it's not a waste whatsoever. And then again, don't forget to submit your evaluation. Um, this is also how you get career credit and it is required for the state of Oregon for graduation. So just keep that in mind. Alrighty, I think that is about everything. All right, if you wanna go ahead and get started. Yeah, absolutely. Hello, my name is Melissa. I'm the HR generalist for TOK America. We also have uh, Alicia Mayhew, our HR assistant, and our presenter for today, Michael Lindsay, our senior vice president. Mm -hmm. Good morning. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen here and start the presentation. Can everyone see this? Yes. Okay, great. So I'll go ahead and let Mike, if you wanna give us a little introduction and in history on TOK America, we will go ahead and get started. Sure, absolutely. So um, TOK America, we started out uh, in, uh, as an entity, a business entity in Washington County in 1993. Uh, we've uh, been undergoing a development and, and evolution uh, ever since. So to, Pretty exciting to, to see the area develop, uh, generally known as the Silicon Forest. And uh, so uh, since 1993, uh, we started on what's uh, about 38 and a half acres. Uh, we are about 50% built out right now and uh, still have plans to uh, continue to expand in the future. So it's been a very exciting time. Uh, when I started here in 93, we had 16 people. Uh, nowadays, we have 130 people plus, and uh, we have uh, uh, every intention to continue to grow. So we just uh, completed a uh, about an $8 million warehouse expansion just, just recently. So, um, we have another page on the presentation. Very nice. So what we do... There we go. Very nice. So what we do here is we are a chemical formulator. We are a manufacturer. Uh, we manufacture or formulate chemicals used in this uh, manufacturing process uh, associated with the integrated uh, circuit. So basically photolithography. And we manufacture chemicals used in the, the construction and fabrication of semiconductors. 
and uh, anyone, any business entity that is manufacturing semiconductors, we will have some sort of relationship with. Uh, our company, our parent company is a, well, our company is a wholly owned subsidiary. Our parent company is a company called uh, TOK, and that stands for Tokyo Oka Kogyo, which is literally a translation of Tokyo, the city in Japan, and then Oka is uh, applied chemistry, and Kogyo is manufacturing. So applied chemistry manufacturing. Um, our parent company has been in business for 80 plus years. Uh, they started off uh, with uh, manufacturing uh, potassium hydroxide, a very high purity potassium hydroxide that was used in the, these uh, uh, mining torches uh, to make an acetylene torch. So it's kind of interesting evolution uh, through time that uh, from mining to semiconductor, it's, it's been uh, quite a uh, evolutionary in a, a quite a rich path of discovery and, and, and evolution for our own company. Um, we manufacture photoresist developers, clean solutions, and uh, other high purity chemical agents used specifically in the field of semiconductor manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Next, yeah, so. The day-to-day -day operations are quite diverse uh, as far as activities at our plant here in North Hillsboro. Uh, we have a great deal of research and development taking place. Uh, we spend a lot of money developing uh, post-next generation products uh, with the aim of uh, hopefully uh, allowing our strategic business partners to be successful in overcoming their technological challenges uh, that they face on a daily basis. Uh, we also have a sales and marketing team um, that we want to be able to share the uh, uh, information that we've discovered and, and uh, uh, with our business partners. Uh, we advertise and sell the products uh, is uh, that be the commercial aspect of the business, of course. Manufacturing technology, um, this is an extension of our R&D. So uh, the R&D folks, they develop the chemistry that uh, uh, is in the formulation or in the chemical products that we market and sell. Um, but the manufacturing technology group, they design and construct systems in order that we can actually uh, put these products together safely, efficiently, effectively, you know. And uh, so that, that manufacturing technology is uh, mostly an engineering staff and uh, they're really uh, focused on uh, the construction of systems in order to uh, facilitate the formulation of our chemical products. And, and then, uh, in order to make that happen, we have a, a great deal of planning that's required in uh, SCM, which is for supply chain management. Uh, we have raw materials that we need in order to uh, utilize those raw materials in order to construct or formulate our chemical uh, products. So there's a planning team that's required uh, to manage uh, our supply chain and specifically the suppliers of raw materials and making sure that uh, we've got uh, uh, proper uh, forecasting uh, and planning. Uh, and uh, also we want to, must validate that uh, the raw materials are of sufficient uh, quality that uh, we can meet our commitments to our customers as far as product purity uh, and high quality. That's a very important uh, metric for the uh, semiconductor industry. And then of course, our manufacturing folks, the folks that actually are moving the materials around, uh, connecting uh, 
uh, raw materials to our systems and uh, bringing these materials together so that we can uh, package them and get them shipped off to our uh, customers. We have uh, our product offerings come in, uh, could be a, a one gallon bottle. Uh, typically we see 55 gallon plastic drums. Those are the uh, probably the most prevalent uh, package offering that we, we provide. But then also we have uh, what's called an IBC, which is a intermediate bulk container. Those are called totes. And those are as high as uh, 260 gallons per container. So uh, various uh, containers that meet specific needs for our customers. So, and then we ship and receive materials uh, here in North Hillsboro. Uh, we ship to uh, Europe, we ship to Asia, and then domestically in the United States as well. So. Mm -hmm. And then in order to be successful and, and determine our efficiency and effectiveness, we've got to have an accounting team that manages all the financial costs and uh, we need to get paid. <laughs> Of course, and we got to pay. So that is our accounting team. So accounts payable, accounts receivable, and uh, that everything is uh, well understood and uh, carefully managed. Our accounting team, we rely upon them very uh, heavily in order to manage that uh, important thing for us. Absolutely. And then these are some of our products. Mike, if you want to touch, I, I know you've touched quite a bit on some of the products, but just to give them an idea, this is what he was talking about, the high purity chemicals, um, yes. some of the totes and drums, they come in and just a variety of different products that we make that you use every day. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a, there's a lot of different products that, that TOK manufactures and they, they touch various uh aspects of the semiconductor world. And uh, you hear in the news nowadays, this chip shortage business. And uh, there's uh, in the semiconductor, it's not just uh, central processing units. Uh, there's the 3D packaging field, uh, well, uh, panel manufacturing, that's uh, the screens and displays, right? Um, we've got uh, MEMS, uh, manufacturing field. Those are uh, uh, microelectronic machine systems. They're very complex, uh, but we manufacture the chemicals in order to allow our customers to make these very sophisticated semiconductor uh, devices. So much of the devices nowadays are sensors, uh, power systems. Uh, our chemicals are used in order to uh, allow our customers to manufacture these things. Um, nowadays with uh, autonomous driving and, and new automobiles, one can see as many as 200 different sensors in any particular vehicle, you know, new, new vehicle. So uh, this is part of that uh, chip shortage uh, uh, news that's circulating widely right now. It's really actually uh, quite um, uh, problematic as far as automobile uh, manufacturing capacity because of the chip shortage, because these new cars have so many sensors. And that has to do with uh, safety sen sensors as far as telling you when to brake ABS, you know, the braking, the automatic uh, braking system. And then uh, there's just so many different sensors. Well, uh, carbon emissions. So there's electronic sensors in vehicles that uh, create uh, efficiencies uh, in fuel economies in order to minimize carbon footprint. So all these things are, are interrelated. Okay. All right, now you've been uh -oh. with us for 20 years. <laughs> so Mike, if you want to give 28. Oh, 28. I apologize. That is a very, very long time. So you've been You'll around. Have to, 
You have to saw me in half and count the rings, I think. So I'm, like, I'm getting old. <laughs> oh, but ever so important to TOK. So, uh, <laughs> well, it, are... <laughs> it's certainly a great deal of teamwork. You know? Absolutely. And you are the, the glue that holds us all together. Absolutely. <laughs> stiff and, and, and uh, uh, sticky. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's fantastic. So as um, our senior vice president, you have a very big role that you play here with TOK on a day-to-day -day basis and you support every department in every way, shape and form. So just to kind of go through, if you want to summarize, it's here on the screen as well, but just your day-to-day -day responsibilities and kind of what you sure. experience. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and day-to-day -day varies uh, as far as activities are concerned, there varies greatly. However, these responsibilities are a pretty good uh, highlight as far as what the requirements of the job are. And uh, managing the company's day-to-day -day functions and guidance and, and uh, supervision and leadership and whatnot. Yeah. And I will save this for folks to read uh, on their own, uh, but a great deal of, at least in my position, is uh, promoting uh, that cooperation and compromise between uh, the various business entities within our company, right? So it's always about a competition for resources. It's human resources, it's financial resources, it's material resources. And so we have embraced uh, what's called a trust-based conflict, right? So you know, I need this to happen today. If it doesn't happen, then it's gonna be a problem. You know, and so people understanding what those imperatives are, we can actually uh, have a, a pure and, and uh, honest uh, argument about those competition resources. And then at the end of the day, we come together and solve the problem. So how do we best overcome the problem? And that's really a great deal of that day-to-day -day business. And, and this requires the input and engagement from all, right? Absolutely. And yeah. then, um, so if you want, before we jump into this slide, um, can you touch on your education or training that you've received to help prepare you for this role? For sure. Absolutely. So it's, uh, it's an interesting thing. There is no cookie cutter approach. Um, for me, uh, degree in uh, chemistry, uh, Oregon State, 1990, go Beavs. And uh, I was always interested in science uh, as even, uh, I, I well, even, gosh, in grade school, but through high school, uh, very interested in, in chemistry and physics and biology and, and whatnot. And uh, I think that natural curiosity uh, was very helpful, uh, fueling the enthusiasm to uh, embrace a journey uh, in this direction or in this career path. So that's uh, something that uh, all folks, you know, would, would want to consider is like, is there a genuine interest in, in things like this, uh, you know, the chemistry and the, the physics and, and, and whatnot, the math, you know, that sort of stuff. So um, I'm not sure how you could plan to pursue a career in this field, but it certainly would be an interest that one would be, oh, you know, this is a dynamic, uh, very uh, exciting uh, career path or field because there's a lot of stuff and a lot of problems have yet to been defined and yet to been solved. So it's changing very quickly. You know, and this will continue to be the case, and as it has been for so many years, uh, that uh, you'll find uh, new technologies, uh, new problems, new solutions, and being part of providing those solutions to those new problems is, is pretty intriguing, I think. So. Fantastic. Thank you, Mike. Sure. And so... Speaking of um, 
just what you you said about needing to I think be solution driven in this sure. type of industry that we have what kind of problems do you solve on a daily basis yeah so I mean you know problems vary you know greatly mm-hmm. and um it's part of that uh scientific method right it's really the first step in scientific method is defining the problem right so what are you trying to solve right and so you identify a problem you know make an observation uh come up with the hypotheses and then test the hypotheses and then hopefully at the end of the day you're able to provide a countermeasure or some sort of solution to overcome that problem. So what kind of problems? There's various problems, you know, and there's, uh, well, materials problems uh, that we will have uh, a, and we test our, our raw materials very extensively. And sometimes the problem could be that the raw material is not worthy or, or it's unacceptable for use. And so how do we overcome that sort of problem? So do we need to uh, do a rework? Uh, do we need to um, refilter, repolish so we can actually use these sort of things? So, uh, gosh, nowadays with the COVID uh, personnel and having folks to be able to show up to various uh, uh, jobs and job task execution, on the factory floor, that's important. And those sort of problems, we need to be flexible, we need to be innovative, we need to be open-minded. And that's that's a, a lot of the daily uh, problems that we're trying to solve nowadays, so. Absolutely. All right, and then what would be an interesting project that you have or are currently working on with TOK? Well, there's a, a number of things going on. Uh, we're actually looking at uh, expanding our uh, operation to another state. And that is one project that I'm looking at. So I'm, I'm working with other local jurisdictions and it'd be a sales operation. And, but so anyway, to, to understand uh, uh, tax structures, uh, any sort of permitting requirements, you know, that, those sort of things. So. It's basically a path of discovery, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, that's the project that I'm working on right now. So <laughs> definitely, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. But of course, we are very loyal to our good friends in uh, Washington County and Oregon. Uh, we're not going anywhere except for up. So, oh, that's right. Especially being in the semiconductor hub here. For sure. in- oh, so. Here to stay, just expanding. <laughs> so here's a nice picture of our headquarters. This is TOK headquarters located in Kawasaki City in Japan. And uh, it's a, a great building. Uh, gosh, it's been around for oh, a few, few dozen years at least. We had another uh, headquarters here, but this is the, the newer headquarters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then here we have, so this is just our, oh, yeah. um, we have seven plants total in eight bases, seven plants in Japan. Um, we can try to pronounce them on, I'm sure Mike actually could. But Miyagi, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. So several different places. We do have uh, five logistic bases. And then outside of TOK Japan, we're also located in, we're global companies. So we have yes. subsidiaries in Taiwan, yes. Europe BB, China, uh, the yes. Netherlands. And then of course here at uh, Hillsboro yep. for North America. Yep. As far as manufacturing centers distribution, absolutely. So in Milpitas, California, Dallas, Texas, we've got presence. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is our home base we're straight out of Oregon Hillsboro. This is our um, plant and headquarters. When you drive out Brookwood, we're located right across the street from Genentech, right next door to Acumed, and just about two doors up from New Starbucks and Top Golf. So when you're driving out uh, Brookwood to 26, you'll see uh, this uh, fine building and uh, the activities taking place out here. 
North I think I have more pictures too. Let's see. Yeah, so good shot of our entire plant. You can see the yep. huge empty field that is our land, and we do have plans to expand in the yep. very near future and you continue growing. Yep, and that's that new warehouse there in the, the uh, lower. Oh, yeah, 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 you got it. Yep. Yeah, brand so brand new. Brand new. This was a big project, so that oh, way yeah. we can fit more drums and just meet our customer demands and and, and the conference supply. spaces for collaboration and, mm -hmm. and yeah, that's for sure. Perfect. And then these are just I have a couple photos we can kind right. of touch base. I wanted to show kind of what the manufacturing uh, environment looks like. So uh, we have this picture here of our manufacturing uh, of Clean Solution, one of our products. And you can see the totes, or I'm sorry, the, the, the drums uh, that are filled yeah. with the, yep. the product and yep. all of the different controlled areas. Yep. This is a visual of what some of the PPE required looks like when you do have to work with these chemicals because they can be hazardous materials. So safety always is number one with us. We wanna make sure our team is safe and wearing the proper um, PPE necessary to keep themselves safe. So PPE, this PPE, personal protective equipment. That's right. Uh huh. Yeah. And and that's critically important. And it's it's a last line of defense. We want to keep the chemicals in the containers where they belong, and not on people, and not on masks, and not on suits, right? Or yeah. boots, right? So we spend a great deal of effort engineering processes and systems in order to uh, be good product stewards and uh, keep these chemicals safe and sound where they belong. We gotta understand the properties of them and we need, must respect them as well. But as a last line of defense, we use PPE uh, to protect our employees and materials handlers. And uh, that's a, a critically important thing. There's a great deal of evaluation that goes into ensuring that the appropriate PPE is prescribed as well. So the gloves, you don't use a, a, like a glove that you handle donuts with to handle our chemicals. It's gotta be a latex glove and there's breakthrough uh, qualities, you know, that we can check and see and make sure that the materials compatibility is suitable. So we protect our employees in case uh, of a, a system failure. Yeah. Definitely, the suit as well, the Tyvek suit. Yes. In case chemical is accidentally splashed or during a mix or a pour, yep. uh, the, the suit, it is not very comfortable. It's a very thick material and it gets quite hot, but if the chemical- Well, it's a moisture barrier. And so mm -hmm. heat does not escape very efficiently. So it gets hot <laughs> and it's uncomfortable, yeah. That's right, but it will keep you safe because if the it chemical will. does it get will. on the suit, it will not penetrate the suit, meaning right. it will not penetrate your skin, which is very, very important. So that's great. Yep. All right. And then this is um, just going into the lab now. Mm -hmm. we touch on some of the instrumentation we, we see and work with as well as part of our process on a day-to-day -day basis. Quality and uh, that is in, in an impurity are very important for our industry and our products. So what we're seeing here is a gas chromatograph, also known as a GC for folks that don't wanna say gas chromatograph. <laughs> but basically what happens with this is that we inject a sample, uh, for example, of a raw material, and uh, there's a column inside, and this is based upon a separation uh, science that uh, we can, uh, separate the analytes, uh, pass them over a detector, compare them to a standard, and we can see that uh, we are 100% uh, against a standard or 90% against the standard. We can make an evaluation for uh, quality of raw material and, and with our products as well. We can perform, or, uh, perform uh, analysis that allows us to ensure that what we are delivering to our customer is what was intended and what was promised. And we keep very, very close eye on these sort of quality metrics. So we use a lot of sophisticated uh, instrumentation in order to accomplish that. And this is one example of that. 
That looks like an IC, Ion Command Graph. Mm -hmm. And uh, similarly, it's uh, used to analyze and monitor uh, trace impurity, you know, and ensure that uh, we're develop or delivering the quality intended. Minimize particles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is just an example of one of our lab technicians working in the lab. That looks like an ICPMS, mm -hmm. which would be, this will be on the test. <laughs> Inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometer. And this is used to measure trace metals in, at the PPB, parts per billion level. And so that instrument is probably about $250,000. Mm -hmm. And we've got several of them. And we make that investment because we want to ensure that our products are meeting or exceeding expectations for our customers. And that's how we stay in business for 28 years or our parent company for 80 years. So it's, uh, it's the instrumentation is one thing and our technician front uh, operating this very expensive piece of equipment uh, is eminently qualified and knows precisely, they, they can go through this instrument uh, front and back, top and bottom, and they know every square inch of this, this let alone how to perform the analysis uh, consistently and reliably. So that's a, it's a great picture, actually. Mm -hmm. This is a packaging, or actually a filling room in the photoresist building. And it's uh, probably a class uh, 1000 clean room. There's a class 10 uh, clean hoods, which means that there are less than 10 point five micron particles per cubic meter. Uh, so the, the air particulate is very, very clean in these areas because that air particulate can get into the container, which would be a source of defect uh, for in jeopardize product quality. So having these clean rooms is critically important for us and that they're uh, monitored and that they're maintained and uh, that's, that's a very important piece of our operation here. We've got several of these clean rooms out here. Mm -hmm. This one. Mixing tanks, mm -hmm. right? So we'll formulate chemical uh, products in these various tanks. Mm -hmm. That's a good example of that. Mm -hmm. So what makes you proud after 28 years of being with TOK and in the yeah. industry? What would you say is a, an accomplishment or something that makes you proud? To be able to see, you know, the, the, the energized faces on our employees, the level of engagement that they are uh, so happy to be able to come to work and, and be able to contribute to something that is bigger than them, you know? And being part of something great is, makes me proud. It's really cool. So I really like that. Very nice. And let's see here. So let me move this down here. So what do you think makes you fit well into your position? Um, and this can be just anything from what you like best, what you like least about it, and then, of course, any uh, the second question is just aptitude, skills, or any personal uh, qualities. What do you think makes uh, someone successful? Sure. Yeah. Well, um, very deep question. <laughs> <laughs> so I like um, probably one of my favorite things aspects of the job or of the field is that it is never boring. There is always a challenge. Uh, you got to keep your, your head up, your head on a swivel, and you're looking at the next thing, right? And so it's, it's, it's fun in that regard. It, it is certainly not uh, making uh, big rocks into small rocks, that's for sure. Um, 
what sort of uh, aptitude skills, uh, personal qualities, um, adaptability, yeah, flexibility, I would agree, uh, would be a huge one. Uh, collaboration, right? A willingness to engage with the team, right? Uh, Self-awareness, empathy, yeah, yeah. Knowing one's limitations and 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 a, a willingness to accept criticism, right? You say, "I got this, I got this," and then someone's bold enough to say, "You don't got this. <laughs> we need to work <laughs> on this." And and to be able to accept that sort of you know honest and sincere criticism, I think that's a really a powerful quality, and then that most folks ought do better, right? Um, I think that's, that's very important. Uh, when we speak of communication, um, probably the most important piece of that communication puzzle is listening. You got to hear what's being said, right? And uh, then also with communication, uh, an ability to express opinions uh, in written form, especially uh, orally, to be able to engage in, in, in speaking with folks uh, and to be able to make sure that your voice is heard and that your opinions are understood or your concerns, especially. Um, that's, that's a real important uh, piece in our business. And this drives continuous improvement. It drives safety. Right, and it, it drives the, the next discoveries. So those communications very, very critical. Okay. All right, so some future forecasts for our industry. Um, I listed here, so what kinds of jobs exist around you and are supporting you and as Mike touched on, we have so many different people and so many different divisions that support the day-to-day -day operations in order to allow us to be successful in the semiconductor industry. And it starts you know, with everybody, chemical operators who produce and manufacture the product, oh. shipping and receiving clerks who ship out the material to our customer, our quality assurance engineers. Without them, we could not, again, deliver a quality product to our customers. So that's really important. Uh, chemical engineers who constantly are developing and making sure the processes and products are, are good for our customers. Chemists and lab technicians working simultaneously in the lab to make sure that, again, they're analyzing samples to ensure that quality. Um, we have principal engineers who are constantly working on new designs of systems and automation for, you know, to enhance and make us more efficient, uh, especially to cut down on time. If we can cut down on time to produce more uh, product for our customer, that's going to enhance the efficiency as well. And, you know, just so many others, uh, other career opportunities, planners, research and development. We have scientists that we work with as well. Sales, someone has to sell the product. <laughs> that's important. And then of course, human resources to support our team and manage everything for our people. Administration, uh, information technology as well just to make sure things are keeping afloat and we have no IT issues. <laughs> yeah. so very, very important. Um, hiring outlook, is there lots of demand for new employees or is it uh, very competitive to get into this industry, would you say? So for this one, the semiconductor industry, it's like Mike said, there's a chip shortage right now. Um, yes there is a very high demand to get into this industry and the opportunities are constant. So if you were to pull up an Indeed search, for example, and you know look at any of the jobs listed or career opportunities, um, definitely there's, there's many at this point. And just to be able to support a lot of the semiconductor uh, clients that we have, we need to consistently uh, just meet the demand and make sure we, we do have staff who is trained and developed to, to jump in and definitely uh, be a part of this industry to continue meeting that demand. So definitely. Um, and then do you foresee fundamental changes coming in the next few years? So um, as projected, we 
see a continued need to expand and grow our team as business continues to rise because it's right. definitely on the rise, especially with COVID and folks working from home. That's right. been huge. We've had a huge boost uh, in our, our demand to support the folks working remotely as well. Um, so definitely we need to con continue expanding our product line to remain innovative and just meet those demands. Right, agreed. All right, so Mike, uh, Yo. would you have done anything differently in high school that would have helped you in your current job? Boy, we hadn't invented high school when I was there, so no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, uh, you know, in high school, I, again, I touched on this very early on, that I really enjoyed chemistry, physics, mathematics, and, and all the sciences. And so um, that was in high pursuit of my interest in the sciences. So uh, I would not have changed anything in that regard. Uh, it's, uh, I had great inspirational teachers. Um, and a lot of the stuff that we're talking about today didn't exist. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, it was, you know, some of the, the the basic analysis and, and, and scientific inquiry and, and, and methods. Certainly that's been around for, you know, since the 1500s, but as far as technology and uh, semiconductor manufacturing and, and autonomous cars, <laughs> that doesn't exist. And there's a lot of things, you know, we're, we, we haven't even been able to formulate the, the problem statement yet in order to come up with solutions. So this will be the exciting part for the new team coming up uh, as you continue your uh, educational path and your, your, your path of discovery and uh, looking for your own careers. There's, you're going to be, you're going to be uh, solving problems that, that haven't been defined yet. That's pretty cool. Um, Definitely. And one other yeah. ad is just participating in more group activities because oh, we're sure. a subsidiary right of Japan. Yeah. Um, we, we work with, and not even just Japan, we work with so many backgrounds of so many different people from different cultures and yes. ethnicities. And um, it's really wonderful to collaborate with them and hear an idea you might have not thought of, right? And yeah. just. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As far as, you know, my own career with TOK, I've been to Japan uh, 18 times. Uh, I've been to Germany, I've been to Israel, I've been to Taiwan, I've been to Korea. So being able to travel and experience these, well, different cultures and, and experiencing the world, it's been quite eye-opening as well. And um, so that's been pretty exciting, you know, that it, it is a global community, you know, so mm -hmm. that's been pretty interesting. Definitely. And uh, is there anything that you you would have wished you'd known sooner in this before jumping into this business? Well, gosh, it's uh, again, it, it, it was very organic for me. Uh, having joined here in 93, I'd uh, actually been uh, setting up labs related to uh, fuels. Uh, we had uh, it's, um, you know, so we talked about the GC, so setting up GC, setting up labs in order to make evaluation on soil and uh, water samples from leaking underground storage tanks and uh, being able to identify uh, uh, extent of uh, leaks of these tanks into the aquifer and uh, develop uh, work with a geotechnical firm in order to develop mitigation strategies in order to make sure that, uh, the, and this wasn't our product, but it was another company. But anyway, um, but setting up the labs, that was, that was really fundamental as far as my experience coming here. So. Pretty nice. And what, would, what do you think uh, students should know now just to make them a good candidate for future jobs in this industry? Well, be curious, right? And satisfy your curiosity. I mean, there's just so much information available. There's so much, uh, so many resources available, right? But satisfy the curiosity, you know? So. Definitely. 
That's what I tell folks at uh, TOK. I say, uh, get inspired, then go inspire. Absolutely. And once you find that inspiration, you can research universities that will offer right. a field of study, you know, of that curiosity. You'll... It, it could be classics, you know, physics, uh, mathematics, chemistry, or, you know, uh, but even uh, more edgier stuff like material science. That's right. Right. So, and there's a lot of resources out there. So. Oh yeah. And just getting relevant experience. You can do internships, externship yes. opportunities. We actually offer internship opportunities as well uh, at TOK America. So definitely just uh, doing everything you can to research the field and yep. make yourself, you know, more uh, experienced is great. That's right. Satisfy that curiosity. All right, perfect. Well, that's all we have here today. Um, any questions or anything that anyone would like to ask? Yeah, so um, back on the TOK, how do you transport them like safely? Is it by the barrel or mm -hmm. how do you transport the chemicals safely? Yeah, we have wooden pallets. pallets. Uh, it's basically a tray that we put the drums on and we can uh, band those drums to those pallets, right? And, mm -hmm. and um, on the chemicals, what mm -hmm. happens to the chemical that that is kind of like damaged or like what happens to the chemicals that didn't make the cut of that? Sure, so there's a number of things. Uh, the least desirable outcome would be disposal. And disposal means it goes to uh, a permitted disposal facility and it's very uh, carefully tracked. Uh, we, we, we hate throwing things away. So that's why we wanna get it right the first time, right? I mean, so the, 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 there's a, the, the saying it's a reduce, you know, reuse, recycle. Right, so if there's an opportunity to recycle, something doesn't meet the, the grade, then, then we'll do that too. And so rework is definitely something that we're able to do. Uh, filtration technologies, uh, those are very uh, important for our business. And so we can actually rework things that don't uh, pass the first time around. Okay. Well, I have a question. Um, so for these internships that you guys have, are they catered more to college students or would they be more like high school students are able to um, participate? They are more catered towards our college uh, graduates. So typically recent graduates, we've had um, two this year actually that we've, we've done internships with, one in our engineering services uh, field and then the yeah. other was in our, our planning department actually. Oh. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we we've had two this year, but we do them, you know, typically with our, our recent college folks looking to get their their foot in the door to this industry. And we want to kind of be the first exposure that they have. Definitely. And then I also wanted to see. Um, so what are the entry level jobs for you guys? You know, like what's the starting pay? What's mm. the position that they normally hold? Yeah, great question. So we have a couple different entry level, um, I guess, positions that they can start off in. So it, depending on the interest, you can jump into manufacturing straight out of high school. This one does not require any type of college background. Um, it's our chemical operator. So this one, um, they would be wearing the full PPE, PPE that you saw in the photo, and they would be the ones actually mixing and filling the, the drums and totes with the chemical. So we offer full training so they can get certified to learn how to do these mixes safely and uh, just you know manufacture the product correctly. In that position, um, it would start off currently because the market changes at $18 an hour. If they're working a night shift, there is a shift differential. So they would get an extra 10% uh, if they're hired on with TOK and off the top of my head, I think that's about 1980 an hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um, if the, um, let's see, entry level position, let's say we have a recent graduate with a science degree. So it could be chemistry, biochem, uh, mm -hmm. biology even, um, or any re relevant uh, field of study. 
they can become a lab technician and mm -hmm. work to support our inspection division where those folks, they're in the lab, they are the ones who are analyzing samples to make sure that our product is meeting the quality requirements we have in place for our customers um, before the product is actually shipped out and delivered to them. So again, like Mike said, if it does not meet our, our standards or our customer standards, we will not send it. So that's a big part of what our inspection folks do. And for that one, it, it depends on um, just the amount of lab experience they have as far as starting pay goes and things like that. But um, this one's typically a very popular one for our recent graduates. Right. Okay, and I just wanna check in um, with the students. Um, if anybody has like a last minute question, they can drop it in the chat. Um, but besides that, um, this was a great presentation, you guys. I, I was thinking of questions to ask and I'm like, wow, you guys are really going through all the ones I, I had uh, planned for. Um, Cause I was like, what, a, what advice do you have? Wonderful framework and then we yeah. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, stop recording.